wife and I belong to a cooperative farm group and every week we get to go directly to the farm and we pick up a bunch of fresh produce. Well, what that has yielded so far this summer is us walking home with a bunch of paper bags with various fruits and vegetables and things in it. And my wife thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had some sort of crate that we could put it all in? Even better, wouldn't it be cool if it was vintage and kind of retro -y and looked kind of like a peach crate? So the first thing I did was head over to Amazon and of course I saw lots and lots of wooden peach crates. But I also found multiple sources for these vintage peach crate labels. So I picked up a couple of them that I liked grab myself some hemp rope just from the local craft store for handles and I've got myself a piece of Douglas fir and I'm going to make a produce crate that we can take to the farm every week to pick up our fruits and vegetables. First thing I want to do is break down my board into three 24 inch long pieces. These will make the sides, the ends, and the bottom parts. Now you want to take those 24 inch pieces Mark a line six inches from one edge and go ahead and rip all three of them. Now for these particular boards, I'm left with an off cut that's about three and a half, three and three quarter inches left over. Don't ditch that, but instead take two of those strips and resaw them right down the middle. These resawn parts will be the side slats. And it's good to go ahead and do this now because it's always a good idea to let resawn wood rest a little bit before you do anything else to it. It's liable to do some cupping and twisting as you relieve all that tension. Now grab one of the 24 inch by six inch long pieces and joint one long edge of it. Now I'm gonna put a tongue and groove on here to join two pieces together for the bottom. I'm using a tongue and groove plane to make it really stupid easy. I start on the long edge and I work my way back. And I'll work until the plane bottoms out. This is the groove. Now I'll joint one edge of the mating board, again another 6 inch wide by 24 inch long piece. Flip the fence around on the tongue and groove plane. This now cuts the tongue of the tongue and groove joint. Now I'll come back on both boards and just chamfer the mated edges. It gives it a little bit of a shadow line. And assemble the tongue and groove for the bottom panel. This is usually a pretty tight fit, so just some light taps of the hammer will seat it together. Now grab your remaining six inch by 24 inch long piece and cut it down the middle into two 12 inch long pieces. And joint one edge of both of those pieces. Now bring it over to the shooting board and go ahead and shoot the end grain to get nice flat and square ends to each of these 6 inch by 12 inch long boards. Now show them to the bottom panel to figure out how much narrower the bottom panel needs to be. Mark that line with a straight edge and then just saw off the waist. Ta-da! Now the ends perfectly match the width of the bottom panel. Now go dig up those slats we resawed earlier, joint one edge of them, and use a marking gauge to mark a line two and a half inches in from that jointed edge. And using a plane, you can just quickly remove that waist to get four slats that are now 24 inches long and two and a half inches wide. The thickness doesn't really matter, but more than likely, it's going to be about 3 8 to maybe a little shy of 3 8 of an inch thick. Once I hit that line, I'll just go ahead and put a light chamfer just to knock off any sharp corners on these slats. With the slats done, all of our parts are complete. Now it's ready to make it purdy. I'm using a decoupage paste called Mod Podge. I picked it up at a Michael's craft store. Just paint it onto the surface, then take your label and position it where you want it, kind of press it into place, and use a roller to work out any air bubbles and adhere it to that first coat of glue. Now I want to come back with the same glue and paint it over the top of it. Now on this thin paper, the edges start to curl up on me a little bit as I apply the moisture that is this paste over top. So once I've got that coat on, I'm going to go back with a roller and ensure that everything is pressed down solid to the board. 
So after waiting about another 30 minutes and applying a second coat and then waiting another 30 minutes, it's dry and it looks awesome. It's got kind of a glossy look to it and the brush strokes stand out in, in high relief. So I think, uh, I think this'll do. So now I just need to drill a couple holes for the rope handles and then it'll be time to assemble the whole thing. I'm gonna drill two holes for the rope. They're gonna be two and a half inches in from each edge. And one and a quarter down from the top. need a three quarter inch hole for the rope. So let me grab my three quarter inch auger bit, chuck it up in my brace. Bore through just till you fill the hole poking out the other side. it over and finish the hole from the other side so I get a nice clean exit. The whole thing goes together just using cut nails. I've got some uh, cut finishing nails here and I've got it propped up so that the bottom nails into the sides and what I'm going to do is drill these holes at angles. So what I end up with is kind of like dovetails with nails. The alternating holes can help to hold everything together. Now you definitely want to pre-drill for cut nails because of the wedging action. Without that pre-drill, it's going to split everything all to hell. What I do is I choose a drill bit that matches the smallest dimension of the cut nail. And then I want to make sure that I position the wedge so that it's wedging across the grain, along the long grain direction. And you can see how these will go in at an angle like that. Just like dovetails. Now the slats will get nailed in to the end grain of the end pieces. The bottom slat will also get nailed in to the bottom piece. I want there to be no gap here in case, you know, something small like we get some blueberries and if they tumble out, I don't want there to be a gap that they can fall out. So I just use the same finish nails to put three nails in the bottom slat into the bottom tongue and groove. On the sides, I'm going to get a little fancy. I'm going to use some rose head nails. And same thing applies here. I want to do this kind of dovetailed action. Especially because I'm drilling in to in grain and you know that's going to be the least the surface with the least holding power. Although these wedge shaped cut nails do a really good job of holding even an end grain. I just need to repeat that up the sides. Now I've got the other slat that goes above that and I've just got a piece of stock here. I don't know, I guess it's about seven eighths of an inch thick. I just liked the spacing that gave me. So slipping this board in between helps me to make this gap even throughout. And I will repeat this. OK, 
Okay, the last step is to secure this rope handle on the outside. And essentially, I've knotted one in and I secured the tip just using a little bit of CA glue. It kind of wicks up in the rope and it holds it together because this is a series of three different ropes and if it frays, the whole thing can start to come apart. So with one end knotted, I'll go ahead and feed this through and the three quarter inch hole exactly works. You kind of have to twist it to get it through there. That knot pulls up tight. And the fun part, this really thick rope does not knot really cleanly. You just have to slowly cinch it down. And if you pull the handle in so it's a little bit snugger than you want, and then when you get the knot kind of cinched down, you give it a good tug from both sides to secure it. And then I just need to cut it off. I'm just using a, a knife here. You can kind of saw it away. And again, just a little bit of CA glue right in the end of those fibers to just help keep the whole thing from fraying. Well, there we have it. It's a nice size, nice and deep, can fit all kinds of stuff in there. It's really, really strong with all these cut nails. I love the rope handles and I love these labels. This decoupage is really pretty cool stuff. I mean, it's just basically a, a gluish paste, but it uh, really secures it on there. I could actually see using this in the future for like a liner inside a box or something like that. But um, it's not as rustic and vintage as I was thinking in the outset, but it's certainly going to darken up over time. It's one of the things I always forget when I see Douglas fir in the rough. It's so much darker than after it's been freshly surfaced. So I'll probably stick it out in the sun and let it darken. I did leave some of the rough sawn marks on here. I just hit kind of skip plane things with a hand plane just to clean it up so that you weren't going to get splinters in dealing with it. But you know, you can see there's still a rough sawn here. There's some rough sawn on the edges. So that will all darken kind of unevenly and add to that uh, vintagey charm. And I love these rose head nails on the side. So uh, that's it. Now I just need to go to the farm and pick up some vegetables.